so this is another illegal route <clears throat> people just wrote it within the last day or so you can see even it could have been even this morning because there's fresh tracks completely illegal hill climb you got this beautiful natural area it's gorgeous you got this heavily used ATV legal designated route to come to a beautiful view spot and moto guys do that it's like why there's there's trails here you know uh, they're, they're not making motorized recreation um, look good when they do this uh, not at all and so <clears throat> Peer pressure works. So if you're out riding and a guy's gonna go hill climb this, it's up to you to not bite your tongue. It's up to you to tell the guy when he comes down or, or you meet him on the other side around the hill that that was a stupid move. And, and uh, better yet, if, if your guys are doing this, that responsible guy in your group should say, hey, let's do a volunteer project and come and race this and bring your McLeods and your Pulaski's in here and, and make that go away and, uh, and then block it where nobody else wants to, uh, to do it. And you can get together with a land manager, but you should come out and take care of stuff like this. That's what responsible riders do. But today we have so many irresponsible riders and they, they don't even think about it. They just see a hill climb and they see a place that looks tough and they just blast up it. Um, it's one of the disappointing things about so many videos posted on YouTube these days. Uh, uh, glamorizing, glor glorifying, um, completely irresponsible use. And a lot of it's coming from our hard enduro riders too. And here, these are sponsored riders that need access to public land, uh, uh, you know, when they get my age. But their behavior of promoting completely irresponsible use uh, isn't going to do them any favors because by the time they're my age, they're not going to have any place to ride on public land. It's going to be street races, street performances. And yeah, when they're young, sure, they can go through a log course, obstacle course at, you know, Erzberg or in the streets of Spain or whatever, if that's the only way you can ride your bike. But how many guys in their 60s and 70s, you know, the Colton Hakers 30 years from now, the Cody Webbs when he's 70 years old, is he really wanting to do a log course through the streets of you know your local city or is he going to want to come out with his grandkid and ride an area like this on his and the grandkid on it whatever pw50 electric bike they have in the in the future um, i think it's important to think long term and not about today's ride you know today is me getting to the top of the hill and i don't care about the future or thinking long term about when you're 60, 70 years old, being able to come out and enjoy public lands with your grandchildren. Uh, uh, that's where my mindset is. So he'll climb, climb alley here. So let's go over and take a look. So here's what we're dealing with. No motor vehicles. They come out and they sign it. So that one over there is signed. Okay. Again. What's that say? No motor vehicles. Yet today, riders th see that as a neon sign that says, climb me, when it says no motor vehicles. So the trail police would encourage you to be responsible and not do that. And the irresponsible riders are going around closed signs. So, and then saying that I'm trying to describe this as my trails. I hardly ever even come here. I don't think I've been here for three, maybe four years. Um, I don't consider them my trails. But this is where you learn to be a responsible rider. But when you see this and when you think it's okay because your buddies do that, go right around the closed signs, hill climb, uh, and then you bring that to the pristine backcountry trails, this type of riding, you don't volunteer, you, you uh, belittle those who do volunteer, you come up with negative labels for those who do contribute, who do volunteer, uh, people that you say don't want to share their trails. They don't want to share their trails because you've demonstrated yourself to be an irresponsible rider who has never given back in any way, shape, or form. The only thing you've ever done is put pressure on uh, land manager or private property owners because of your irresponsible riding uh, to close trails. 
Um, so I'm, I'm going to stand up for the trail police. I'm going to stand up for land managers. I'm going to stand up for irresponsible, or excuse me, I'm standing up for responsible use, volunteering, um, you know, coming out and, and you got a sign, well, tell the land manager you want to do a volunteer project and you bring your buddies and, and not only stick the sign, but block this where this, this um, behavior would end. Um, don't be the guy that comes out here and breaks the sign and continues to hill climb this uh, and, and, you know, cause a, a negative uh, situation here. Um, uh, turn, you know, turn your passion into a, to a, uh, a positive contribution to our sport to make us look good, not, not uh, um, demonstrate how irresponsible moto riders are. Hope, how's this? What do you think? Do you see the problem here, guys? Do you see it? So there's a whole bunch of riders that see nothing wrong with this. This is just, hey, let's hill climb this. Let's just go blast that. And then this occurs in the backcountry. Or even right here, what do you think the non-moto person that walks up this trail and sees that does? You think they might take a picture? Do you think they might share it with a land manager and then project that this is happening everywhere? And so when they write a letter about a trail that they've never been on promoting closure, do you think their, their tone is, is that the moto guys are out here raping and pillaging mother nature and, and demanding closures for trails that they've never even seen? Because this is what their perception is. And they, they uh, uh, you know, fight, fight against it. And then of course, let's say you're a land manager and you're, you're responsible for managing this area and you see this. Are you inclined to work with the local club who are good stewards or the local volunteer advocate when you have this, you know? Well, now instead of building a new trail and working with the club, the land manager that is, to build new stuff, new sustainable stuff, the inclination is, is more about fixing this stuff. Uh, and, and then you burn out volunteers because instead of getting more mileage, they're out here closing off this stuff. Well, if this didn't occur, then the, the people that are advocating for new trails, um, uh, including people within the agency, the land manager, are going to be out spending time building new trails to improve the opportunity within a network, you know, a, an area, as opposed to wasting time and money to prevent this kind of uh, resource damage. So, um, you know, I think we need more trail police. I think we need more people that, that take a possessive attitude and, and don't want to see this uh, occurring within their designated network of trails. Uh, uh, I think more people need to step up within riding groups. And, and when somebody in your group goes to hill climb that, that you uh, make it clear that it's unacceptable. You know, get them out here where they have to do volunteer work. The guys in your group that are uh, engaged and grossly irresponsible riding, uh, they get away with it because People in their peer group don't say anything, you know, and, and uh, you know, speak up. Tell them that that's, you know, unacceptable. But no, 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 who gets blackballed? Oh, I don't want to do any trail work. So you, uh, you don't show up to a trail project because that guy works, all he does is trail work. And I don't want to do trail work. So you blackball the guy out here working his butt off and you ride with the guy um, tearing it all up. Uh, I, to me, it's, it's, it's backwards. Um, you know, it just doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, But because I am known for doing trail work, I am blackballed by those irresponsible riders who never want to give back, who never want to contribute. Oh, he, all he does is work. Like I want to do more work. No, I'd like to see some help. 
so that I could ride more and work less. But when when my uh, there's an off trail, the intersection's up here, which is a sustainable grade. You can see somebody took the time to block that one. Now that needs to be blocked, and that needs to be blocked. Fortunately, there is some timber with more than one guy. We could easily block that off and put them back on the sustainable grade. But again, if you look at it from my point of view, trail volunteer, I look at this and see work. Okay, and I look at it and I go, I'm by myself, I can't move the logs. So it means I gotta go find, you know, two or three guys, get them back in here that are like-minded. We gotta bring our chainsaws, we gotta drag the trees and block this off. Um, so it just looks like another work day to me. And then, you, you know, you guys read a negative condentation to, to my attitude. Well, I do have an, uh, a negative attitude about um, irresponsible use. And, um, and I, I have a bigger negative attitude to the way irresponsible use is promoted uh, on the internet uh, and glorified. I think what happens is uh, guys will ride an area like this with no concern. They don't have a responsible ride leader uh, who's teaching them good riding etiquette. Uh, you know, as simple as what we saw or when you come to another group, I'm by myself, so I hold up zero, okay? If I have four guys behind me and a group's coming at me, uh, I hold up four fingers to let them know there's four more riders coming, okay? Uh, for safety. Uh, that's, that's teaching people. When a rider only knows his buddy, the irresponsible, look at this. Ridiculous. Trail goes over here and they're hill climbing. Okay? So then when you you think you can hill climb and there's nothing wrong with that in your you know in your brain, uh, you get, you hook up with a responsible rider. Look at this. Okay, and then He, he talks to you about riding responsibly and not tearing stuff up, staying on the trail, volunteering, all the things that go into being a responsible rider. And the first reaction is, is he's, he thinks those are my trails, you know? Uh, and he's telling me that I can't come. No, he's not telling you you can't come ride public trails. He's telling you to ride responsibly. Uh, there's a huge difference. Now, if you show contempt, and right there, another cut line trail goes here, but nobody goes here. Uh, you know, if you show contempt, uh, look at that, straight up. Uh, then you don't get the invite back again because you disrespected them. I'm on the trail, these guys hill climb, they miss the turn so they go above it, okay, there's the cut, so, and then some would say that I shouldn't show this stuff, you know, well, I'm showing why it's so accepted, look at this, and notice there's footprints, so you got a hunter that's hiking up here, he sees this stuff, all he has to do is pull out his phone, he wants hunting season, he wants quiet trails, you know, he doesn't want to scare the wildlife, so what's he do? He goes to the land manager and say, look, look, these trails need to be closed. I don't like when people put pressure on the responsible users of an area who are trying to keep an area open and legal so that everybody can enjoy it. As a put and then people who want to just tear it all up with no regard and no concern about being able to come back to a legal riding area because they don't care if it gets closed. They act like, oh, I'll just go poach it if they close it. If the trail gets closed, just like those hill climbs I showed earlier, those hill climbs straight across there. Um, they act like they can do it and get away with it. Well, part of the problem is, is when no one in a peer group 
when you see your buddy doing that, it's up to you to stand up to that, that uh, irresponsible user that you're riding with and call him out. That's how this stops. And of course, the guys engaged in that aren't going to like me challenging people in their group that are responsible riders to open their mouth. He, he likes to intimidate and, and make sure that the responsible guys in the group don't say anything and keep their mouth shut and, and, and watch him uh, and his irresponsible riding. And just like you saw right there, somebody had um, drug brush to try to block the cut line. Well, that person, that volunteer, uh, the land manager, wouldn't it be better to have them out there building a new trail because they don't have to waste time fixing all this, these uh, uh, you know, areas that people are cutting and going off trail? I think it's way better and way more productive to have land managers building new trail and um, um, you know, not being out here having to cut or, or fix all the cut lines and take care of all the irresponsible use that goes on. It, by the end of a season, they've got no budget, they got no personnel to fix it all. Uh, and, and so they're always on their heels short of volunteers, short of grant money, and uh, it's all because completely irresponsible guys are out here creating a bigger mess for them. So this is not the trail, but it's really hard to see the trail. The trail is right here. Nobody's used it in such a time the grass has grown over it. But they are cutting the trail in order to hill climb. So I'm actually on the trail that you can't even find anymore. And uh, now I'm back on it. the difficulty in, in teaching people to be uh, a responsible user uh, it's, it's hard when this is the go-to place to learn how to trail ride and you think you're a trail rider yet you don't know anything because you don't have a good teacher in your, in your peer group uh, because all they know is tearing it up so like right there we backtracked this earlier but <coughs> this is the trail nobody takes it so let's say I am the the ride leader and I went around that my buddies are gonna see that as an opportunity to pass me well the people in the group unless I wait at the bottom and tell them hey we're going this way if, so I kind of have to wait there and tell them hey no the trail goes this way and uh, educate them and if I don't do that I got guys right behind me in my riding group while I'm a responsible user I'm not doing my due diligence to, to watch my group and, and teach my group that that's not acceptable okay and, and then my group never realizes that they're an irresponsible rider and then of course they they get their tampon in a in a wad when a responsible rider calls them out years later because they think well i've been riding for 20 years i've never heard that uh, i'm a responsible rider no you've been riding irresponsible the whole time and uh, uh you just never got called out and the message isn't to tell you not to ride the message is, is to tell you to ride responsibly and, and be part of the solution, not part of the problem of keeping trails open so everybody can enjoy them. When, when I get a trail legally designated, you know, my trail, the trail I built, the trail that I go to the Forest Service, the trail that I work through NEPA, the trail that we get letters for grants, the trail that I arrange volunteers to, to uh, you know, to build it. Uh, well, how is that my trail when I'm getting it designated for public use? 
where everybody can ride my trail. Uh, I'd say it's anything but. It's the, the least selfish thing I can do. Sadly, everything we're talking about, the odds of the message ever reaching people that need to hear it is zero without help from responsible users telling their friends and sharing this and telling people that they need to listen uh, to this, you know, and, and then more so taking the message and, and you know, applying peer pressure. The problem of uh, trying to teach responsible use and trying to, you know, give writing tips uh, is that frequently you end up preaching to the choir.